It's time for Defending and Commending the Faith with Joe Mott, inviting the atheist, agnostic, and skeptic to examine for themselves the evidence for the Christian faith. We are all limited by what we do not know and by the things we think we know but are not true. Dr. Joe Mott earned his Ph.D. at LSU and was a distinguished math professor at Florida State University for 38 years, helping to write three math textbooks and authoring over 30 research articles in math. He is now the host of this radio program, Defending and Commending the Faith. Here is Joe Mott. Hello to everyone. Welcome to the program. In previous episodes of this program, we have discussed One, the Quran, the holy book of Islam and its scripture. Two, Muhammad, the supreme prophet of Islam. Three, Allah, the God of Islam. Four, the Shahada, the central proclamation of Islam. And five, the six articles of faith, that which all Muslims are to believe. Now we turn our attention to address the fundamental practices and duties of all Muslims, called the five pillars of Islam. Muslims are required to, first, recite the Shahada, which says, There is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger. Second, pray the Muslim ritual prayers, five times a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. They pray the same exact prayer over and over again. Third, pay the obligatory alms, that is 2.5% of their profits. Fourth, fast during the month of Ramadan. And fifth, if able-bodied, make a pilgrimage to Mecca sometime in their lifetime. Muslims also believe in jihad, or holy war, which some radical groups have exalted to the level of a pillar of Islam. This will involve killing infidels for their faith, including Jews and Christians. Apparently, more moderate Muslims think of jihad as being a sacred struggle with the word rather than with the sword. Muslims would say these are the things Allah has commanded in the Quran, and every Muslim must do all of them. Muslims would say, if we do these practices, who can deny we are Muslim? This means that salvation in Islam is not, as in Christianity, to know the God of the Bible and become more conformed to the image of his Son, found in Romans 8, verse 29. Rather, in Islam, man's purpose is simply to understand Allah's will and to become more obedient to Allah's commands. Salvation is found in complete surrender to Allah. This is in keeping with the meaning of Islam, that is, submission, and Muslim describes one who submits. Salvation, then, is ultimately dependent on works, contrary to the Christian declaration that salvation is a gift of God, described as eternal life in Christ Jesus in Romans 6, verse 23, and that it is by grace you have been saved through faith, And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. That's found in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. To properly understand the Muslim view of salvation, we first need to ascertain what Islam teaches about sin. In Islam, sin is not a state a nature inherited from Adam, but an action, a deed instigated by the individual. It is not the case that the deed is the consequence of a sin nature. In Islam, there is no inherited sin, 
only personal responsibility. Humans are born free of sin. Everyone is born in a state of purity. Sins have consequences, but sin is not inherited. We are in this world as a result of Adam and Eve's eating from the tree, but we do not bear their sin. Allah will not hold the child accountable for the sins of the parent. On several occasions, the Quran states that, quotes, no soul shall bear the burden of another, end quotes. One place this is found is in Surah 35, verse 18. Islam explains sin in terms of people's ignorance, weakness, or misjudgment. The sinner does wrong to himself, Surah 65, verse 1. People sin because of human weakness and forgetfulness, Surah 4, verse 28. Yet Allah remains unaffected by the sinner's actions of sin and the deprivations of forgiveness because... He is far above his human creatures. Christian scholars have long recognized that a weak view of sin always leads to a weak view of salvation. Whoever does not recognize a serious sin problem for human beings will not value the need for atonement. This, unfortunately, is not only a major error of Islam, but many others downplay the importance of atonement and forgiveness by not recognizing that all sin is ultimately an act of rebellion against God. The psalmist writes concerning sin against God, quotes, against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, end quotes. That's found in Psalms 51, verse 4. The book of Romans in the New Testament points out that every human being suffers from a malady caused by both sin and sins. Sin is the root cause, and sins are the fruit that is produced from the root. As a result, Christianity points out that every human being desperately needs God's forgiveness if our sins are not forgiven, we will spend eternity suffering the consequences of our sins. Matthew 25, verse 46 records Jesus saying, quotes, These unrighteous people will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life, end quotes. John 3, 36 informs us that the wrath of God abides on the unrighteous. Why would the wrath abide on us if we did not inherit Adam's sin? Romans 5, verses 8 and 9 explains, quotes, God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, having now been justified, declared righteous, by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. End quotes. In Christianity, our Heavenly Father is not only displeased when we sin, he is also grieved and personally affected. Genesis 6, verses 5 and 6 says, quotes, The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. End quotes. The prodigal son said, I will arise and go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. That's found in Luke 15, verse 18. In Christianity, the biblical diagnosis of sin goes deeper than ignorance, weakness, or misjudgment. 
It goes to the human heart, which suggests a nature that needs changing. The Bible is replete with references to the heart. Let me just mention two quotes. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, end quotes. That's Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. Jesus said, quotes, those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart and they defile the man. For out of the mouth proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies, end quotes. That's found in Matthew 15, verses 18 and 19. In Christianity, sin has to do with our innermost attitude toward the Father God. We want to shout it from the housetops that I did it my way instead of acknowledging our dependence on God. We want to be our own judge in deciding what is right and wrong instead of trusting him. This attitude is the root of all our wrongdoing and sinful behavior. The penalty for sin in the Bible is physical and spiritual death in this life and in the next. That is why we need a Savior and the atonement. Islam denies the Christian doctrine of original sin. That is, that every human being has inherited Adam's sin. To be sure, Muslims concede that Adam disobeyed God and consequently was banished from the Garden of Eden. But they deny that Adam gained a sin nature that would be in the future lure him into sinful activity. In Islam's view, Adam was the same after his one offense as he was before he disobeyed God. Adam, Islam claims, was still perfectly able to obey God. Muslims also believe Adam's fall had no effect on his descendants. One Muslim writer notes, quotes, people are born innocent and remain so until each makes him or herself guilty by a guilty deed, end quotes. Muslims make one key argument that they think supports their claim that Adam did not commit a major sin. They assert first that Allah's prophets do not commit major sins, and second, that Allah would never entrust important revelation to one who was an evildoer. Instead, Muslims say Adam simply made a mistake Then he repented, and all was well. The idea that Allah could be troubled by trifling mistakes of a mere mortal is considered absurd to Muslims. They believe people are able to free themselves from bondage to sin. Accordingly, atonement for sin is unnecessary. Human beings need not to be redeemed, They do not need the services of the great physician. The sacrificial death of a Savior, Jesus Christ, is not required. Why? Because in Islam, man is fundamentally good, and a person's salvation can be obtained by pleasing Allah with good works. Surah 23, verse 103 says, quotes, In the day of judgment, They whose balances shall be heavy with good works shall be happy. But they whose balances shall be light are those who shall lose their souls and shall remain in hell forever. The role of good works is not the same in Islam and Christianity. In Islam, good works have an atoning effect. Muslims assert, quotes, the good deeds remove the evil ones, end quotes. That's in Surah 11, verse 114. The Bible gives a contrary response to Islam. 
Romans 4, 5 explains that God saves the ungodly. Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9 makes it clear that we are not saved by good works. Rather, salvation is a gift from God. Good works is a consequence of salvation out of thanksgiving. In fact, before we are saved, our works are done in the flesh. And Romans 8, 8 informs us that, quotes, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, end quotes. Titus 2, verse 14, asserts that God's redeemed people are zealous for good works. Romans 13, 14 tells us, to, quote, to put on the Lord Jesus Christ, end quotes, like a garment. Isaiah 61, 10 explains, quotes, God has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness, end quotes. There is a course that speaks to this issue most pointedly. Quotes, I am covered over with the robe of righteousness that Jesus gives to me, gives to me. I am covered over with the precious blood of Jesus, and he lives in me, lives in me. What a joy it is to know my heavenly Father loves me so. He gives to me my Jesus. For when he looks at me, he sees not what I used to be, but he sees Jesus, in quotes. Salvation is a divine exchange. Our filthy rags of self-effort in exchange for God's righteousness. Romans 5.1 asserts, quotes, having been justified, de declared to be righteous, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access into this grace in which we stand. In quotes. Allow me to end this episode with the reminder, exercise daily, walk with God. Thank you for listening to Defending and Commending the Faith with Joe Mott, a production of Wave 94 Radio in Tallahassee, Florida. If you have any questions or comments for Joe, please forward them to Doug Apple at Wave94 at this email address, dougapple at wave94.com. And be sure to join us every Monday evening at 6.45 p.m. on Wave94 and subscribe through your favorite podcast app, Defending and Commending the Faith with Joe Mott.